Okay, so I have this where I, instead of using some modeling paste that I thought I had, but I didn't, I took some, a golden ground for pastel, which is a pretty thick, um, gr um, pretty thick gel. And I mixed in some fluid acrylics in some red and I put that down on this canvas and I put a little texture in there with this and I'm just going to play around with this again here's another practice canvas that I have so I as I look at this I think gee that reminds me of a flower so what can I do and I picked out some colors. I have some colors here that I like. So, and this is Eva Pink from Charvan. It's a great color. And, whoops, let me get this one. Here is another one I need to buy more, Julia's Pink. So one's like a red violet and the other one is more like a salmon color. Then I have an olive, which is also Charvan. I mixed them together with Eva's pink and Julia's pink to see what would I get. And then I thought, well, I want something that is yellowish. So I picked out a cadmium yellow medium hue and I mixed it with the olive to get this light green and then also with this Julia's pink and I got this nice orange. So those are kind of my colors and maybe as I go along I always like to add in some viridian because these are yellow greens and I may want a blue green which would be viridian. These are red violets, so maybe as I go, I might also want to put in a little bit of a blue violet somewhere. So, and I have a marker, an orange marker. I've got my Stabilo crayons <clears throat> in a green and a black. And so I'm just going to start by making just a few lines and I'm just going to make this into an abstract flower. So I'm going to start off with just a few lines. <clears throat> I don't have a drawing that I'm looking at. I'm just going to put in some lines and I might follow some of the lines that are in here from the underpainting. And this is something I got for free. It is a watercolor marker, Winsor Newton. So it's got two points to it. This one is more like a brush, so I'll use this point right here. I haven't really used it, so I really don't know what it will do and whether it will, if I put water. Oh, it is, look at that. Oh, that's cool. So, I don't know what that's going to be like after it dries, but I really like the effect of that. Hmm. I might have to get some more of these. So, let me put 
Maybe some right in here. And maybe I'll brush that again a little bit. That is, well, it says it's a watercolor marker, so I don't know what's going to happen to it after I put um, paint over it. Are these marks going to disappear? Or is there some way I can preserve them? And maybe that might be by spraying some Spectrafix on here. So let me just put just a few more little marks with this. And now I will. I like that effect though. That's a really nice effect. Now I'll put some black in. This is a water-based crayon, these Stabilo crayons. So I can just put, you know, some kind of marks. And now to preserve these, I think what I'm gonna do is go over it with some matte medium. I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to brush over these black lines with some matte medium. Okay. So yeah, it messes them up a little bit, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to paint over them. So I don't want to put too much down and I just want some of these things to be in the background and actually I kind of wish I had a red one. I'm not so sure I even want to use this green. No, I don't think so. I think the black and the orange was enough. So green I'm going to just disregard. And I might put the black. Let's see. I'll put the black. You know, if I had a marker, I could use a marker. Well, I do have a marker. Um, but I don't like a line that is real um, permanent. But let me, tr let me just try it. This is the time to try something like that. So I do have a marker. We'll put that right there and see what difference that makes. This is just a marker I got from, it's a Milwaukee marker from the hardware store. So we'll just, we'll leave those and that's probably enough for right now because I'm just gonna go over some of these things. I think I'll loosen that up a little more. I just want a kind of an indication of something that looks like it might be a flower. So I think I'll let this dry a little. You know, there's all sorts of things I could put down here, but that's, see that marker is very permanent. So I don't use those just because I don't like the look of it. So I'm gonna let that dry a little bit and then I'm gonna come back and put some paint in. I'm gonna put some of this neutral down that I mixed with the um, pink and the olive. I'm gonna put that down first. And I'm gonna leave this white area in there. And I'm 
I'm just going to put the paint down pretty light in the beginning, light and loose. And see what happens. I want to leave some of the red showing through. Oh, here I'm going over that area that has the texture, and maybe that those lines don't quite go with um, kind of a flower theme, but eh, it's just a little practice like. A lot of things are okay I need to go a little bit darker I think so I like that pink but I'm going to add some white to it I'm going to need a darker color I can tell that like a, a magenta probably it's very light I don't want to get too light I want to have uh, some contrast in here so so this brush I don't want to use the same um, size of brush all the time either so I don't want to get too much paint there so I'm going to stop with that and I think I want maybe some of the olive because I don't want it to get too light, like I said. So maybe I'll put some olive. I think I'm gonna try a different brush also. I want some lines. I want some different kinds of brush strokes so you know with acrylics you know you can just paint over something now I do kind of like that texture that I'm going over it and I'm thinking well you know that texture in a way is what happens with the clear gesso on the paper and the pastels where you're hitting that top ridge of the um, paper and then some of the underpainting is showing through. So I do like that, how that is happening right there. That's kind of a nice effect. I think I'm gonna get out some other kind of red. I think I'm gonna get out some the underpainting was a cadmium red, so I'm going to look for some cadmium red and get that out. So actually right now I have the other red I got out is naphthol crimson, which is very flowery, and I got a different kind of a brush out. I'm going to put some different kind of brush strokes in. Uh, it's I still need something darker. So I'm gonna grab some more of that paint and darken it up a little bit. I don't wanna to get too light and I wanna have some depth. Okay, that's probably better. Oh, really, you know, when you mix a little white in with that naphthol, you're really getting kind of that deep pink. That's kind of nice. I'm not thinking flower. I'm just thinking colors of flowers. That is a very pretty color. That's probably the same color they used to mix up that tube of paint. All right. Yeah. And... Okay, I think I want some 
Maybe I'll mix the green in with it now and see what I come up with. I really want to make sure that I have enough contrast. That's one of the things that I think is really important is to have enough contrast. So if I mix red and green together, I'm going to get another kind of a red. Well, this is really kind of a lipstick red. I think I probably have enough red in here. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to leave some of this underpainting because it was such a brighter red. And uh, I think now I'm going to go in with a different kind of a green. I think I need that. I think I need that, uh, the green with some of the cadmium yellow. I need to change it up a little bit. So I'm going to make that. Okay, I think this is a, a needed color that I'm going to put in there. This is some of the olive, and I've been mixing it with this, and I think I'm going to put it in there with this. And let some of that texture go in there. And so I'm just moving the color around really not thinking about it too much right now. Um, I'm thinking light, dark, yellow, red. Oh, I'm gonna mix up a little white into that green I just mixed. And I'm gonna put that right here. Go through like that. So, you know, I'll just play around with this for a while, keep the same colors, and I think I probably will add some kind of a cool, probably the Viridian in here eventually. And like that green. That green is really nice. And uh, putting it on kind of thick right now, but oh, I'm going to put it over that texture. So if you wanted to get texture on your canvas, so you can do it in different ways like I did where you use, you know, like a heavy gel of, well, I used the um, golden ground for pastel because that's all I had and I thought I had some um, modeling paste, but I didn't. So I thought, well, I'm gonna use this stuff and see what works. And having some added texture in here gives it some surface um, interest. So it just kind of changes it up a little here and there. You don't put it everywhere. Maybe you put it in the areas where you want there to be some attention. Now, if I just hit the top of that, that's really nice how that just hits the top of that texture. And... I like that. So I'm just going to continue to add just a little bit more paint here, probably some coral color and then maybe some viridian. And also maybe I'll go back in and add some of the black lines and bring finish this up. So it's kind of fun. And then I'll show you the end result.
Well, I'm wrapping this up by actually by putting some white back in with this paddle and just kind of covering up some places. I mean, this is going to be really pastel-like, which is okay. So I'm just going to kind of cover up some areas, go back in with the side, and I like to leave these white areas inside of anything that is kind of a floral because you know, um, when the sun shines through flowers, we see that negative space. So I do like to leave that imaginary spot there. I do like this, uh, this tool. It's a lot of fun to drag that through. You can go overboard with it but it is kind of fun so i've been putting in some white and the white is kind of cutting through places and like i said kind of giving that you know you can put paint down and then you can kind of cover it up again with something else and make another kind of an effect. So that's really what I'm doing here. And you can see I put a little bit of the Viridian in. I could actually put a little bit more now as I'm, you know, looking at this. I could probably put even a little bit more Viridian, different places. Not just in one place, maybe more bold in one place and less bold somewhere else. It's really kind of faded away right here. Like I said, I'm not thinking, oh, I want this to look like a flower. I just want it to look like an impression of a flower. The, um, like if you were to see a flower and then turn away, what you would remember when you turned away, what would that be that would stick with you? Now, I think I need to go back in probably with some lines of some kind, um, so I think I'm going to let that dry and then see what I want to do with it later. Um, you know, how do I want to get some darks in? And do I want to put in some more black lines? I could do that later after it's dried. And uh, I think that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to leave that, I think, just the way that it is because you get to a point where you're not sure what to do. So the best thing to do is just leave it alone and step away from it and clean up and go do something else. So we'll see. I'll look at it again tomorrow and maybe I'll think, well, I should put in some a few black lines or maybe some red lines somewhere, but I think I need to let it dry because it's pretty wet right now and there's parts where there's a lot of paint. So, and the other thing I'll do is I'll take a photograph of it and I'll look at it on my camera. So that always is very helpful to me. I'm really liking this area right in here with these overlapping colors a lot. So, well, I hope that gives you some ideas on things you could do with texture, underpainting, 
and then kind of to making some imaginary flower painting with just the colors, the basic colors, not too many colors, but just kind of basic colors and mixing them together to get some neutrals and um, using a variety of brushes and just seeing what will happen. Some mark making tools and okay, that's my flower painting.